Good afternoon, everybody. We're back with more updates on construction progress going on around the Disneyland Resort, and we're starting in downtown Disney parking lot to show you the current state of the pedestrian bridge. Uh, this is actually the parking lot area, but this is it's all one big project, and there you can see some various items of destruction and uh, rubble, as it were. But this is really where all the action is. We're at the this is where the pedestrian bridge is crossing but right there there it is right there uh, it's crossing from the pixar pals parking structure and it's going to go through that gap in those trees and it's going to cross through and into this area a lot of staging a lot of a lot of preparations being done here and there it is again that's the where the bridge is going to be and what i want to focus on in these shots are those red cylindrical uh, forms that we talked about last week those are concrete forms for the bridge supports as we pull back, we can see three of them come into focus there. And then we'll pan to the right a little bit, and you can see each one is progressively smaller than the previous one. That is the decline. The, uh, the bridge is you know, grading down, as it were, to eventually meet ground level. So it's going to cross the street and start turning left, and then gradually going down as we see those some forms have been poured some not and there's the there's the smallest one right there and then it's going to touch down there's another small one it's going to touch down just to the right of this as we pull out right there that i believe is where it's going to touch down and meet ground level and then the path is going to run the length of the downtown disney parking lot now I want to go back for a second back to this shot where we happen to catch as we are panning to show you those bridge supports we happen to catch that a new gap has opened up uh, on the corner there last week we showed you this footage where they were they were digging up concrete at the corner of I don't know what and I don't know what <laughs> I can never remember the street names but that is that is the corner outside of the downtown Disney parking lot and they were digging that up that is not pedestrian access today. You cannot get there as a pedestrian today, but uh, we have that, and now we have this, which is a mirror of what they're doing on the other side. If we're looking at this now, the, the footage that we just showed you is back and to the left. It's behind us and to the left. And there, so it's on each corner of the downtown Disney parking lot. Our assumption is that this is going to be for pedestrian access. It will eventually be for pedestrian access where guests can cross the street. Let's say they're not crossing the bridge, but they're on foot from some other point in the, uh, uh, the Pixar Pals parking structure. You'll remember, for example, that there's a path. When you, when you exit the Mickey and Friends structure, there is that path. There's that path that you have to walk to go through downtown Disney, but you shouldn't have to go up into the parking structure then over the bridge to do that you should also be able to cross the street right there we're guessing that's what they're going to let us do they're going to let us cross the street and then into that footpath really cool right i think that's interesting uh it's it's a, a, a part of this that i wasn't expecting now let's go back to the mickey and friends and pixar palace parking structure we're going to start in that gap in between the two structures mickey and friends on the right which we're standing on pixar palace on your left and what we're seeing in those crates right there is, I think, well, Dustin has suggested that's cladding. By the way, thank you, Dustin, once again, for helping us this week. Uh, he's, he's giving us all of our useful information for these updates, but that is cladding, which we'll get to in a minute. You're not, it's not being installed here. It's going to be installed on the front of the parking structure. And then you got these guys, which are, you got some conduit. Looks like they're getting ready to run some conduit, and that guy's having a hard time starting that air compressor. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think that's what that is. Uh, or I'm not, well, maybe not. I'm not sure. But uh, they're, get, they're getting ready to probably to do some electrical work in there. We'll pull back out. And now we're going to show you. This is interesting. Okay, we've been watching them put together this uh, loading area for the trams. So that's our assumption, obviously, because it looks like a place for guests to queue up, right? And I, I still think that that is the case, but I'm trying to figure out if we can, pretty sure I focus in there, what those things are in the middle that look like bathtubs. <laughs> um, probably benches. They use, uh, they use, 
planters to sort of give definition before, so maybe it's something like that. And then this would also point out that that guy right there who's sweeping, he's spreading sand over the paving stones that they've already put in, and this helps to fill in sort of like the, the cracks and other open areas, and, and it helps to keep the, keep the stones in place. Because like, I would imagine if it's not airtight that they would, there would be some unsettling, as it were. So thanks to Dustin again for that. Now we can go out front, and this is what we're talking about. Those, so those stairs right there, that is cladding. I think that's the cladding that Dustin was referring to. That cover that they're putting over the, the stairs for the parking structure that don't exist on the Mickey and Friends. So they're, they're, that's a new feature, which I, I think I like. I think I like that uh, closing up of the stairs there. They've started to fill in, that, cause they've created that awning, that shade structure for the parking structure. They're starting to fill in the, the tiles on the top. I wonder if that's more of the cladding that we're seeing, if that's the same thing that we're seeing them do for the, for the stairs. And you can see as we start to zoom in that there are, they are filling in the areas around the utility vaults. Starting to close that in with more paving stones and finishing that off. Back to the top floor of Mickey and Friends to get us a little higher view. And there's that awning we talked about earlier. It's starting to look like a real parking structure. <laughs> Interesting that they closed up. God, it wasn't that long ago that this was just dirt and then concrete. But now it's starting to have some texture and some personality. All right, let's stop here because we got a few things to show you. Starting on this lower left corner over here, you can see that they've, they've poured a curb. They've, they've constructed a curb around the bottom of the escalator. Uh, the idea here is to sort of create some definition uh, from this area, which is out of frame, you know, the escalator that's out of frame from the parking structure. And you'll likely see paving stones approach the curb from the parking structure side, then inside the curb on the escalator side, you might see a different texture, a different color, some other sort of design, more decorative perhaps, uh, of, the, of that area within the curb. And then meanwhile, back over here and to the right, there's a gentleman who is uh, preparing a form, a narrow form at that, and this too, we believe, is going to be a curb. Hard to tell if that's gonna connect or not with the other curb. They don't seem to be joined in any way, but a curb nonetheless, separating the parking structure from the you know, the hub where the guests descend through the escalators. I can only imagine how much paving stones all that's required. By the way, no, well, I don't see any movement at all on those things that we talked about that were possibly security areas as we swiftly pan to the left. I don't see any progress there. Uh, no more definition on that. And no more definition happening here on that pedestrian path that we showed you earlier. It's still about how, as, as, as it were, the tram path has not, they haven't built any more or poured any more of the blacktop for the tram path that I can tell. Okay, let's switch over to DCA and the emotional whirlwind. And you can see that they have installed the memory balls, the, the, the deal uh, that, you know, the, that we're going to hang from as we twirl around on this emotional whirlwind. Those are the empty boxes that you're saying there that the memory balls used to be in. But I want to stop right here. There's a blanket. We've been observing this area as probably being a potential area for the control panel, for the cast member control panel. Uh, and you can see that blanket there is covering something which it has to be the sort of the decorative control panel. Uh, 
you know, it's funny when Dustin first mentioned that as being a control panel, I never really associated it with the actual inside out control panel. I'd always just assumed it would be a typical standard Disney control panel without too much theming. But I, I can't see a scenario where it doesn't wind up looking like this, right? I mean, that's what that is right there that's covered by the blanket. And that's why it's covered because they want it to be protected. But very soon you'll see that thing installed on top of the area where they're preparing the control panel or maybe sort of appended to it. Uh, I also found this on the interwebs. Now, I, it's doubtful that this is the actual control panel because it's more decorative than purposeful. And, the, and if it is a true cast member control panel, it would have to have some actual functionality. But I thought that was neat that, that there is something out there <laughs> that was fully realized as a inside out control panel. Uh, but I, I think it's a reasonable bet that that's, that's what we're going to get there. All right, let's see what else we got here. Nothing new really happening on that uh, area that we've been watching in terms of the turnstiles, which we assume are going to be turnstiles, so I don't think I really focus on that at all. Update on Silly Symphony Swings. Looks as it always has. All right, Marvel Land. Uh, not much to observe here. You can see the queue decking is still in progress. And by the way, when I say queue decking, I don't mean the queue for the attraction. That's what it's called. That's what that surface material is called. It's called queue decking with just the letter Q. So no, con you know, to remove any confusion there. There's the outside portion. Uh, Let's take a minute here, actually, to pause, because we've been trying to figure out how the Spider-Man building relates to the tissue box that they have some, for some reason, spared from you know the previous Bugs Land. Uh, we thought that they were going to connect, but if you look at this, we got these images from Bio Reconstruct, who does some great work with it in a helicopter. Man, he's great. Uh, Bio Reconstruct constantly putting out great images. Anyway. He's on Twitter. Uh, those two buildings don't connect at all. I mean, there's a serious amount of, of real estate in between the two. So it's difficult to guess what the plan is here. You look at the concept art, and it all does look like one continuous piece of building. So I'm not sure what to make of this. Um, we're going to follow this, obviously, closely. I, I doubt that we're going to get any more of these kind of shots from Bio Reconstruct because he's typically East Coast, Florida. Special trip you made to California for this, I think. So, uh, Or she, by the way. Um, we don't know. I don't know <laughs> the identity of Bio Reconstruct. But having said that, if we come back to our image from the ground or from the, from the Pixar Pal around, if we focus in on, that, on, the, on the tissue box, they have taken down the front of the tissue box the facade is gone. It's down to studs. So you could actually see right through that building if we had a, you know, a good enough uh, image of it. For what purpose? I wonder. For me, that, I mean, it sounds like they, are, they have another plan. Uh, if they were just going to repurpose it, Ian's suggestion was they were, they, it was going to be a restroom because that's what it used to be was a restroom in Bugsland. Maybe it's still a restroom. Maybe they're just going to reskin it and give it the the, uh, the uh, Marvel Land look, which is fine, but they would all they would have to do is redo the front wall, right? But they wouldn't have to tear down the wall down to studs if they were just going to reskin it, put up a new a new facade. Uh, they they re, they're rebuilding it, more likely. So it's an interesting situation there. That again, as is the case in a lot of situations, we'll have to stand by and wait for the next week to figure out what they're doing. There's Mount Gamora. Next 
There's a lot going on back there. Now that excavator, that's a big piece of equipment. We're going to stop. A big piece of equipment designed to make big holes. Add that up with the fact that now you've got a whole bunch of trench boxes on standby down here. That's a lot of trench boxes, some big ones too. Should we be preparing for some major uh, excavation here? Uh, in you know, Let's say below grade work? Food for thought. I, I can't wait to find out where those trench boxes go. And I'm pretty sure that both these and those are trench boxes. You, you, you dig the trench, you put the trench box in the trench, and it helps brace the sides of the wall so they don't collapse in on the people who are working in the trench, doing whatever they're doing, you know, pouring their concrete or conduit or whatever they have to do. It, it maintains the structural integrity of the trench. Can't really see today anything new developing for the uh, trolley tracks. It could be, yeah. France may be getting midway maybe, and we may be getting something else. We're assuming that it's the same. The concept art suggests the same story setup in the same building. I think, you know, going back to those bio reconstruct images, I think we're going to do a video on Fresh Break Presents where we're going to help, we're going to try to analyze those images a little bit, see if we can't learn anything, or at least give folks a clearer picture of the size and scope of the Marvel Land project. Go to Fresh Pake Presents and follow us there if you don't already to, uh, to catch up on what we're doing. We do a lot of discussion on, on construction and rumors there. So Fresh Pake Presents, guys. Let's go back on the ground to take a look at what's happening in front of the Bugs Life Theater. Not much today. No welders, no construction workers at all. Uh, so we can't, there's not a lot of progress on this, what we can view here. Still the same vertical beams uh, showing with no, no additional structure added there. So let's go back to Disneyland to recap real quick what we saw yesterday on Fresh Baked, uh, the, the castle, the Sleeping Beauty Castle makeover. That's a look at the old brickwork and turret. There's the new brickwork. Much brighter, bluer, pinker, less salmon, less gray than it was before. A lot of different opinions. I think most people like this. They like the way this is turning out. By the way, for those interested, before we go to the next shot, there's been a lot of discussion about how this compares to the original Sleeping Beauty Castle as it appeared on opening day. So I thought I would drop in this image of Walt looking at a model of Sleeping Beauty and then to the right the castle as it was on opening day with all those happy children running through it. Uh, I have to say, the, the castle that we know or we knew before this makeover started doesn't look exactly like this either. <laughs> I mean, it was more muted. It wasn't as bright, I'm assuming, because photography in 1955 obviously was different than it is today, so it's impossible to say for sure how it looked, but that brickwork definitely was not of the same, even, it wasn't even the same salmon color that we saw previously, I don't think. It was definitely more, uh, or a less saturated gray. But the, uh, the top portion does look similar. So the muted pink and the muted blue on the, uh, on the rooftops. And then here we are again today. Old on the left, new on the right. Old spire, turret. As of you know, a few months ago. New turret. New turret. I have to say, I think I like it. Let's go to Hungry Bear, where we've seen the outer deck under scrim the past few weeks without any kind of idea what's happening. But as Ian pointed out, those things that I'm pointing at right now, those are supports uh, for the awning that rests on top of the covering, the, the, shades, the shade that is provided for the upper deck of Hungry Bear. That's what those things are. And if you look back, that's, you'll see another one in place right over there. So clearly, I think it's safe to assume that that is what they're doing. They're putting more shade on the upper deck of Hungry Bear, which we are all very grateful. Because <laughs> some people chose not to dine 
uh, on the on that portion of the hungry bear during the summer or spring, for the reason that it was just too too uh, exposed to the elements. Uh, it got hot back there. Real quick, back over at DCA. This is the Incred This is the the fountain out in front of the Incredicoaster, the Incredibles fountain, where they do their, their meet and greets. That is behind some construction walls. My assumption is that it's this is something that they're going to have to do on a somewhat regular basis because that water creates uh, it degrades the the area. You have to kind of constantly maintain that the, the fountain feature. It requires regular maintenance, I believe. Back in Disneyland on on. Uh, Big Thunder Trail, we found this wall pop up, and then we'll peek through the wall to see some rebar and some forms going up where they're going to pour some concrete, new concrete down here. The question I had, obviously, is why? What are they doing here? But it brought me, it, it made me remember what we saw them doing at Tomorrowland. Uh, this, you know, out of nowhere, they, they popped up this, this these walls out in front of Tomorrowland, in front of the, um, the Captain EO Theater, or whatever they call it now, the Tomorrowland Theater. And I had thought, I had heard somebody suggest to me, I should say, it wasn't a rumor, just a suggestion that maybe they were doing that universal fast pass that we've seen or heard of in other parks where you have one fast pass station for all the attractions that have fast pass in that land. So in Tomorrowland, that would be uh, Space Mountain, Star Tours, Buzz Lightyear. Maybe they're doing something like that over here on Big Thunder Trail. Only problem is, is that there's only one attraction at or in Frontierland that has a fast pass, and that's Big Thunder. Although I, uh, Fantasmic has a fast pass also, and right now they just have that temporary thing that uh, gives guests fast passes. Although that's all going through the app now, so I don't know. It's it's curious what their plan is here. I have a feeling it, it seems unlikely now that I think about it that they would do something like that, considering. It, it seems very obvious to me that their initiative, their plan, their long-term plan is to get rid of, you know, tangible paper fast passes. That everything is going to be digital in the not-too-distant future. So, but, you know, food for thought. Also in Frontierland, all the walls have gone down or come down from in front of the uh, gift shops. So it's just obviously a repaint of the facades, which is a great relief to some because that means we spared the Halloween tree just in case you're worried about that. And then we'll wrap with this shot of the new curb out in front of uh, the Frontierland entrance. Yeah, it's just one long non-curb. It really struck me this, this past weekend how odd it felt to have that one long curb like that. I really don't, I mean, I get it. And it's probably a great idea. It just... It's weird. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us on this construction update. We hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next week, as always. And as I mentioned, don't forget to follow us on Fresh Bake Presents, our other YouTube channel where we do news and opinion, where you can get more discussion on, you know, this kind of stuff happening around the park, uh, news, rumors about potential construction progress, that kind of thing. Uh, and otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Fresh Bake. We've got lots more videos for you to see, so grab a churro and check out some of our other videos and have your mind blown by how much fun we're having. We truly are the best of Disney Bake Fresh Daily. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time. Fresh Baked!